Welcome to Dog Bones. I'm Steve Dunning, and I'm here today with my guest, Steve Nichols, who is running for re-election for the Manchester Select Board. Tonight, thank you for joining me. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. <laughs> and today we'll be doing, we'll be making some kind of treats for, for dogs. Um, these are called, what are these called, Steve? Dog bones? <laughs> no, dog <laughs> treats? <laughs> Normally we make dog bones and we press them out and bake uh -huh. them and everything, but uh, I thought we'd do something easy tonight so we could put the focus on our talk. And um, so I found this recipe for these peanut butter um, uh, crunch balls, and um, so I thought we would make them up. What do you say? I, I think that's great. It's quite simple. Yeah, yeah, just, just uh, four ingredients. And um, so we have um, grape nuts. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And we have wheat bran and some peanut butter and honey. That's all you have to it. And, we do, and we're going to be mixing them in bowls and rolling them and putting them in, in plates. So let's let's do it. They're even. They, we can even eat them when they're done. Oh too. sure. I mean they're all you know not just for dogs. It's <laughs> yeah, and uh, so um, we're going to be directed tonight by the show's director. Yes. So what do we do first? One, One cup, cup of, of grape, grape nut cereal. cereal. Yes. Put it in the bowl. We're done. Yeah. <laughs> Add one half cup of wheat bran. <laughs> now get your hands in there and mix that all together. Okay. Oh, our hands. 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 Oh. Oh, okay. All right. I made hands before spatulas. <laughs> I think he's letting this God thing get to his head. All right. Add three quarters cup of peanut butter. With our hands? Now you can use the spatula. <laughs> this peanut butter smells wonderful. Yeah, doesn't it? This um, is from um, Nature's Market. Oh, nice, yes. And, uh, it's uh, on uh, Center, Center Hill. Hill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Stop in and say hi to John. John has uh, a lot of Vermont products too, right Steve? Yeah. Uh, several dressings. And... Now right. add one half cup of honey. it all up with your hands. <laughs> well, we can do a little bit with the spatula, can't we, director? It's not working. <laughs> no, it's not. I think we need to do this by, by hand. All right. It's almost like a meatloaf, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> a gooey meatloaf. No, a gooey meatloaf. <laughs> it doesn't really set. <laughs> Dogs are gonna love this. Yeah. Have you ever had a dog? Yes, I have two actually. Oh, you have two? Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. I didn't know this. Yeah, yeah. I have Remington, and Remington is nine weeks old, and he's already spoiled rotten. Uh -huh. And he's a Chihuahua, and then I have Roger, who's a Chihuahua Dachshund. Oh. And they're both rescues. Uh huh. And. I love them dearly. Hmm. <laughs> so one is full bred, more or less, Chihuahua, uh -huh. and one is a Dachshund Chihuahua mix. We call him a Chihuini. Chihuini. <laughs> <laughs> He's not going to have any kind of inferiority complex, is he? No. How are you doing with this? I'm doing it's quite kind of strange, sticky. Isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's they, a, you know the directions made it sound so easy. Oh, you just mix it up with your hands. Well, I think it is easy, but 
I'm trying to roll them. Yeah. I didn't roll up my sleeves uh -oh. enough because they came back down. So. This is what we have staff for. Oh, there we go. <laughs> You're rolling quite well. Go ahead. Now roll them into an appropriate size for your dog. So and what put would a Chewini? <laughs> well, a Chewini. All the way up. Thank you. Yeah, and it's a little bit better. A Chewini is quite small, but I think you're going to need to roll them almost a tablespoon. Um, in order for them to hold. Okay. Yeah, because you get them too small. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And really, you could probably could make them into any shape, you know, if you had like a formed cookie yeah. cutter or yes. something, you know, that... Like hearts. Mm-hmm. You know, let's say for, for Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Yeah. Next week. Mm -hmm. And I use some, um, I cook a lot with maple syrup. Um, I can, um, I made a, uh, a Vermont maple syrup marinara two years ago for Christmas and gave it as gifts mm. and it was delicious and, and added maple walnuts to the sauce oh. and that, yeah, it was, it was really good. And that was my own recipe. Oh. Yeah. And, and what would you put that on? Oh, you could do chicken, um, you could do pork, um, you could lighten up and maybe a little beef product, beef base to it, and put it on prime rib. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll have to do that sometime here and have you make that. Oh, I and, and then make some kind of dog-related. Um, dog um, and maybe even have the dogs here. Yeah. You know, that would be fun. We have Buddy here. He's always here with us, Is but he? um, yeah. he's not one so much for coming on the set, so I'm okay with that. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's happy back there. How is it? Good. So, all right, I'm gonna wash my hands. How are you doing? Are you done I'm too? done. I was very influential in, in discussing with the other select board members uh, $75,000 in the budget for a uh, uh, drug enforcement investigator mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's in the budget mm -hmm. um, we really have a problem here in town mm -hmm. and it, it's unfortunate of course um, that we do mm -hmm. um, and it's but it's, it, it's it's throughout it's not Manchester it's, it's throughout Vermont. it's throughout it's, it's, it's New Hampshire right it's all New England right we're not gonna solve the situation mm -hmm. um, we're gonna control it and we're going to control it deeply. Mm -hmm. um, and we can we can control it with a with a with a drug um, um, enforcer. Uh, oh yeah, I you know there are several things I've shared with Chief Hall that um, you know I think would be helpful. Of course, he's the one that's more experienced than I am. I'm not going to tell him what to do, mm -hmm. you know. But the suggestion would be to create a drug task force committee, mm -hmm. um, and then you could say to me who. Well, we're already Would I taking, reckon? so... <laughs> oh, we are! We're going. Oh, so. we are. Oh, <laughs> we've started already. Well, um, yeah, there's... Um, we, we set up the budget. John gives us, our town manager gives us John a budget. John O'Keefe. Mm -hmm. um, the budget is, consists of about 92 pages of budget. Uh, expenses. Expenses and revenue generators. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it also includes the this year 16 articles um, within town meeting. 11 floor articles and the existing articles are through Australian ballot. Oh, which are five. Twi right. Mm -hmm. Now Australian ballot means for individuals it's voted on behind in a booth. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows whatever. Mm -hmm. When you're on the floor, a lot of people are very shy to vote. Mm -hmm. um, I think that has, uh, you know, in this day and age, some egotistical, rude people that would really 
you know, that speak out? Well, they would speak out, but then the neighbor, who may be your friend, may be against it. Oh, so they and don't so, speak out. You know, and then, and then they say, well, how come you voted that way? Uh -huh. You know, so, you know, certain articles and anything over $2,500 now in an appropriation um, goes to Australian ballot. That's a good thing. And mm -hmm. I do believe that. Mm -hmm. um, I, do you find that people at town meeting, when they're voting uh, whether to fund an organization or not to, they, do they tend to be conservative when in their, in their voting, or do they tend to be more um, apt to say, yes, we'll approve that money? They're more apt to say yes. Uh -huh. And simply, I don't really think that they look at the whole picture mm -hmm. in the budget. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, the larger amounts is better for that to come under Australian yes. ballot because people can, can talk about right. it. They can learn more about right. it. It's not just a yes or no or a, an immediate decision. Right. But it really takes some time. And thought. these are going to be discussed, Australian ballot, in, in town meeting. meeting. Mm -hmm. Pros um, and cons. Pros and cons. Um, you know, I, you, my thought, you know, when I'm in the select board meeting, um, I am voted by the taxpayer mm -hmm. to be on the board. Mm -hmm. um, I sit behind that table and I'm a taxpayer. I own a home here. Mm -hmm. I'm single. Um, I have to pay all the bills. Um, and in town, the salaries are not as high as they should be. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I'm not afraid to say that eleven twenty-five an hour, paying a mortgage, supporting all these nonprofit articles on here and an increase this year um, I have a two hundred thousand dollar home mm -hmm. um, without the appropriations without the voted appropriations my taxes will increase four hundred seventy seven dollars mm -hmm. mm -hmm. with the appropriations my taxes will increase five hundred nineteen dollars I haven't received a raise in two years Mm -hmm. And I've talked to several people, one very influential business person here in town to the other day. I haven't got one in 11 years. Mm -hmm. so, so run these numbers by me one more time. If, if the first 11 articles... All of them. All of them. Mm -hmm. If they are passed, mm -hmm. your, if, if, they, if they do not go through, your taxes go up $77 next year? No, this, it, the current, um, two, if you have the, a $200,000 home, mm -hmm. okay, without any of these voted appropriations, right, okay, without these votes, without, mm -hmm. my taxes will go up 477 477 dollars, okay, mm -hmm. okay, now keeping in mind, you own a $300,000 home, mm -hmm. $400,000 home, they're going to go up incrementally. incrementally. Mm -hmm. Now, we're talking um, this year, Ivan Beatty, who's the chair, we were in the meeting the other night, and he said, you know, um, during budget discussion, we had a separate meeting, I'm sorry, we had a separate meeting, budget discussion, all day meeting. Mm -hmm. We're not raising these taxes this amount of money, mm -hmm. the percentage. Mm -hmm. There's just no way. Mm -hmm. Well, in our next meeting, we sat there and we cut nearly over $80,000. Now, I don't like to use the word cut because my theory is what should come first? Mm -hmm. We have an infrastructure we have to take care of. Mm -hmm. Roads and plumbing and... Roads, um, plowing. highway department. Uh, police department, fire department. Rescue Squad is nonprofit. A lot of people think that the Rescue Squad is part of the town. Mm -hmm. They are a nonprofit organization. They are run separately. Okay, I consider them part of the town, not financially, of course. Mm -hmm. You know, and people do. Um, they're struggling a bit um, because of Medicare and Medicaid and you know, that kind of thing. Um, 
but the infrastructure comes first. And I have, um, I was against some of the decisions that have been made in the past to take a police car, for example, and we would set it in our capital plan. Anything over $10,000 mm -hmm. is in a capital plan. Mm -hmm. um, anything over the $10,000 is put in each year per recommendations from each department. Mm -hmm. So if the police car was a 10-year 10, 10 plan, mm -hmm. it would go in every 10 years. But a decision had been made by other board members, which I was against, to move that police car to year 12. A dump truck to year 12. Paving two more years. Now what do you think's happened? They're coming due. They're coming due. This is why you're see, going to see that there is a $323,000 increase hmm. of 13.67 percent for infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If we had taken care of that back in the 10-year plan, you wouldn't have all this coming due. Mm -hmm. Now, I look at these articles as well when I'm looking at the other part of the infrastructure budget, mm -hmm. because if these pass, the budget passes, you're going to get that $519 increase in taxes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what you need a balance. Um, if we cut some out of here, mm -hmm. we cut 5000 on a police vehicle, we cut 15000 How do you pay. cut $5,000 on a police vehicle? Well, we put so much in every. <laughs> we put so much in each uh, in the in an inter inter no, no, in a plan every year. All right. Um, I can't think of the term right now, but um, accrued. Okay. Okay. And so we took five thousand out of there that we would have put in there. I got it. Which what happens there? We move it to another year. Same thing, depot street, uh, from depot to the circle, to mm -hmm. the roundabout, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that was going to be paved. Paved. Mm -hmm. um, 38,500 for paving Deer Meadow Way. Mm -hmm. It needs it. Mm -hmm. It's moved next year. Town clerk um, had been neglected for several years to uh, preserve the history and the historical documents, which we have way back from Man when Manchester was founded, okay. one of the only in the country. Okay. I mean, <clears throat> so we put a plan together. We've moved it uh, to a five-year plan. Mm -hmm. Rather, I believe it was a four-year plan. Anyway, we took 4500 out of that plan. Mm -hmm. um, we took 5000 out of fire lights mm -hmm. for the firehouse. We did take $10,000 and added from the allocated surplus fund and 10000 from the relief fund. Okay. So we did add back that. Okay. Um, so when you move something to another year, you're creating more in that next year. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because we don't want the tax rate to go up mm -hmm. so much. Mm -hmm. Like Chairman Beatty said, um, he sat there and, and, and toward the end of the meeting and said, this is the highest rate increase in the 20, one of the highest rate increases in 26 years I've been on the board. Mm -hmm. And for Ivan to say that, we consider ourselves a very conservative board. Um, but again, my theory is to take care of the infrastructure. And You're saying infrastructure should come first. It, it, it's got to come first. Otherwise, you're going to get these incredible tax increases. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, um, people may say to me, well, you know, the word pet project is more of a federal term. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like uh, 
Senator Byrd, you know, when he was senator down in West Virginia, who I knew quite well, um, pork barreling money, mm -hmm. you know. Um, you, a lot of these things in these articles I consider somewhat of pet projects. You know, it, it, it's, um, you know, when you look at, um, you know, Depot Street, for example, we've got an article on there, uh, $58,000. There's a grant available mm -hmm. to redo Depot Street. Mm -hmm. My feeling is, you know, we don't need that grant since it's, if it's there. Mm -hmm. Now, on the other side of the story, if we don't take that grant, we lose it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just like the roundabout, mm -hmm. okay? Um, you know, the plan for Depot Street has been reconstructed on several occasions. I was asked if I was in favor of that article. Well, you know, again, you don't want the town to be stagnant, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. first off, okay? You want to create a good environment for the local people, yet you want to watch their wallet. Mm -hmm. uh, you, I think Depot Street needs some crosswalks. Um, I think that can be handled differently. Mm -hmm. um, I think that um, there may be some curb cuts we can take care of down there. Mm -hmm. um, Chief uh, of the fire department, Grub Bourne, is, uh, is shown some skepticism of, of, of this project, along with uh, Jeff Williams, our department chair for the highway department, has showed concern. Um, I think those concerns should be taken more seriously oh. mm -hmm. um, in spending that money. Um, it, it's, it's, you know, everything adds up. 58,000 here, 73, 75,000 for uh, ball fields over at the rec area. Um, you, you know, the, that's another article that's on there, the rec area. Mm -hmm. They want to build uh, more fields at the rec area. Mm -hmm. um, Burn Burton has come up with 75,000, which I'm very grateful for. Uh, another donor has come up with 75,000, mm -hmm. and then we're going to be short about 75 to 85,000. So it's going to need to be fundraised. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a great idea. I think to bring in different uh, big groups. Fill hotels, mm -hmm. restaurants, they shop. Mm -hmm. um, but with that money that's coming in to build those projects, that project, I think we need to create an endowment. And that endowment, the interest from that endowment, be used for maintenance. Mm -hmm. With the increase in those fields, the highway department, uh, Department of Highway, uh, they maintain the rec area. They haven't hired an employee in over 20 years. And we keep stacking weight oh, on the highway. And, yeah. and mm -hmm. so we're going to have to hire somebody else. Oh. So, so we're talking 40, 50,000 plus mm -hmm. for another employee. Who's going to pay for that? The taxpayer. OK? You know, I think Applejack Field is great. Jack Appleman, thank you very much. It was a nice gesture that you did that. But who's maintaining that, okay? Last year was the first year that we nearly broke even financially at the rec area oh. because we had the gate fees from Burn Burton's football game, mm -hmm. okay? We've lost some of that because of Burn Burton building the field, mm -hmm. okay? Um, so if an endowment was set up for Applejack at that time, and continually some fundraising being done to increase that feed endowment, that. to mm -hmm. feed that, that would be maintained, mm -hmm. okay? Um, so I feel by adding these fields, I was, it was explained to me that there's gonna be an increase in fees for them to use the field, $10 an hour. Okay. Well, right now, we're barely breaking even, mm -hmm. but we're putting money into the rec area, the taxpayer. Okay, and when you increase this, the fields, 
you're going to increase more volume, I understand that. But you can't convince me that it's going to pay for those fields. Right. They're going to come back and say, we need more money to operate mm -hmm. the rec area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And again, I have to go back. I'm not against it, Steve. I, you know, it's just we have to look at the whole picture down the road. Right. And because you want to be on the select board for the next 13 years. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. We have a real strong select board, and you know, uh, there's uh, two positions coming up. Mine, uh, another three years, and, and Lisa Souls, very good select woman. Mm -hmm. um, has decided that she's going to depart from us uh, and we'll miss her. Um, Greg Cutler has is, is stepped up to the plate and uh, running unopposed as well. Um, I want to ask you about that, expand on that a little bit. You, you say that Lisa is leaving and you'll miss her. And Tell me about being on the select board and um, when you're making decisions board wise. I mean, are there certain members that you can count on them voting a certain way, or 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 is it like, is it is it all new every time you 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 um, you, you look at a at a at a at a project? Well, it is new. Um, we're pretty much informed throughout the week of happenings. Mm -hmm. um, we. As select board individuals, we can't meet in a group right. unless it's a, a formal, a uh, formal announced. and an announced meeting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you really have to look at uh, the discussion at the meeting and see where people fall mm -hmm. uh, on their decision uh, or where to take it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We had somebody come in last week that wanted a request for money. And we sat there and we back and forth and money and money and we're gonna offer uh, an in-kind help. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe somebody to help them with paperwork or whatever, not money. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ivan came up with that and, and we were for that. Mm -hmm. You know, we talked through it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes I seem to be on the, the single stick of the select board, as people call it. Um, I, when I go into a select board meeting, excuse me, I've read the agenda. Mm -hmm. I've gone through the agenda. I've asked questions to the taxpayers. Mm -hmm. I'm in the community every day, as you well know, at Maplefield, so people come in and share a lot more mm -hmm. than they probably share with other select board members mm -hmm. that, um, you know, have jobs, and, and so I get a lot of feel. Now again, like you and I were talking earlier, it may not be my decision mm -hmm. that I like um, from hearing these taxpayers. Um, you know, I, I, ta I talk to you and you say to me, well, uh, this is my thought, and I'll say, well, this is my thought, mm -hmm. we'll come in the middle. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's always been my philosophy to try to come in the middle and, and negotiate some type of in-kind, for example. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I, I prepare myself for the meeting. Um, I've gone over the budget probably six times. Um, I'm sure the other select board members have done the same. I mean, there are times that we say, well, what's that $5 on that line, John? Mm -hmm. Or where did that go? or how come we spent that there, mm -hmm. you know? Um, the other uh, area of discussion was uh, the Chamber of Commerce mm -hmm. asking for 25,000. Um, I'm a firm believer in small and, and mm -hmm. corporate business and building development in Manchester. Um, we'll get back to the development part, but I was on the board of the Chamber, executive board of the Chamber, and the chamber was operating uh, very nicely. Um, Jay Hathaway was the director at that point. And um, it's called Manchester in the Mountains Regional Chamber of Commerce, which means we took in 
the Stratton area, the Bromley area, the Dorset area, some Arlington area, Danby, the whole scenario. Mm -hmm. With their current budget back then, yeah. my question would be, how come you can't do it now? I know they've lost, when Obamacare came in, um, the chamber had they insurance. Right. They offered and insurance. I do, right. And I think they lost that revenue generation. Right. Um, you know, I think Berta does a great job. Uh, I think that one of the issues we had back then were volunteers, mm -hmm. to volunteer. Right. Right. Um, I would still question, you know, Bennington has such a wonderful chamber. Um, I was on their uh, board at one time. Mm -hmm. um, they're very motivated. They have their businesses all involved, their garlic fest, their uh, bobcat painting or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're very strong. They have no town support. Mm -hmm. The same with Rutland. Yeah, Rutland's a little bigger, but you know, I don't feel that they really should come to the taxpayer for that support. Mm -hmm. um, you own a business in town. Um, you have a marketing budget. Mm -hmm. Being a small business, I'm sure it's not that much, mm -hmm. but you put it where it's most effective. Exactly. And these different businesses, uh, from small to large, should incorporate in their business plan marketing monies. Mm -hmm. If they choose to spend it with the chamber, that's fine. When I was on the uh, executive board for the West Virginia State Chamber, you have to work the chamber. Go to the mixers, hand out your business cards, network, volunteer. They'll work for you, but you work for them too. Mm -hmm. And that's what promotes your business. Mm -hmm. they, the chamber itself needs to go to shows, they need to um, do um, surveys of the hotels and restaurants. They can't segregate hotels, restaurants from retail. Mm -hmm. It's got to be one picture. Mm -hmm. And I think this has been a clash for quite some time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've talked to several business people about this article um, and the partnership that they're calling it. Um, these businesses don't have a clear picture of what their mission is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. um, and how are they going to be able to justify if they get the monies from the different towns, if it was effective in Manchester. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we're Manchester. We need to take care of Manchester. That's not being selfish. Mm -hmm. Dorset needs to take care of Dorset. We can work with uh, uh, Steve uh, Dorset Inn, the owner of Dorset Inn. We can work with the owners of the Barrows House. We always have had that relationship with Dorset, mm -hmm. Arlington. Bromley for sure, Stratton for sure. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so there's, there, it can be worked without this money, these monies. Mm -hmm. um, I had made several suggestions when I was on the board of things to do that were very effective, um, that were not taken seriously, and, and I think they still could be used that way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the town puts up money for the street fest. That's taxpayer dollar. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, there's, it's, it's another sum of money. Mm -hmm. And I'm a firm believer. You and I organize, let's say, uh, a dog relief fund. We're a 501c3, mm -hmm. which means in the state, it's a nonprofit organization. Mm -hmm. We need to be self-supporting. We can't go to the taxpayer, go to town meeting, because it's easy, mm -hmm. and say yes without looking at this whole picture. Mm -hmm. Because you're adding on to that tax rate and you're adding on to the tax base. Mm -hmm. More money, more money. Would you build a house if you couldn't afford it? Absolutely not. No. So why the hell have some of these other nonprofits done the same thing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Use, if you have an endowment, use that interest on that endowment. Increase it by doing fundraising. Mm -hmm. You'll have more money and reduce what your appropriation is going to be. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying, I'm not picking on the library. I think the library, I was against the initial library move. I was on their board. 
Um, I did share that. I did share some concerns, thoughts, what have you. Oh, we got to do this. We got to build this new building. We got to have the best, okay? So now what do they have? They have the best. They have an increased budget, almost twice the size, and they're asking for more money, okay? So I do believe it's a beautiful building. They're often offering a lot more children's programs. They're offering a lot more adult programs. I think it's great. The historical society's there. I think it's great. Mm -hmm. um, but they need to be self-supporting. Mm -hmm. And they would do that by um, renting out space, perhaps, or cutting, cutting um, expenses, or charging more for admission for some of the programs? Or? Well, I, th I think um, there's always a place to cut a budget whether it's good or bad for a year or two, okay? Right, right. Um, I think um, fundraising needs to be more intense. Mm -hmm. um, I think that um, back years ago, half the, or even more than half of the library, the old library, Mark Skinner Library, was um, volunteer. Oh, really? And now they're all paid. Mm hmm Huh. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, really a, a, a catch-22. Again, you're adding more money to that budget. The problem, of course, is once they're paid, you see, now, now you can't get them to volunteer. Right. <laughs> you know? Oh, exactly. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's, you know, and, and they are, um, you know, I've been criticized for being... Uh, so harsh on the library, but you know, we have to, we're select board members. Mm -hmm. We're out to look at this town structure as a whole. Mm -hmm. Not just the library, not just Riley Rink, um, Northshire Day School. They years ago asked for an article, asked for money. Mm -hmm. They're doing wonderfully well. They had a fundraising, uh, Leslie Keefe fundraising guru here in town, set them up. They're doing fantastic with an endowment. Mm -hmm. They're running it. They're not asking us for money. Oh. So, uh, you know, the, the, that's the hardest. And, and, you know, you have to get out and vote, these people, because, you know, people haven't voted for years. Get out there and vote. Mm -hmm. um, because your vote really does count. Yes. And it's oh, my small... vote doesn't count, I hear. Oh, no. my vote. Come on, people. It can be so you know? close sometimes oh. within a few votes, yeah. one way or the other. Yeah. And then you say, oh, I should have gone out and voted. Damn <laughs> you <know>? it. You know? <laughs> yeah. um, but, um, you know, in going down, you know, the articles, um, you know, our operating expenses are in excess of $4 million a year. Mm -hmm. um, for a small community. Um, people label us and have for many years that we're a gold town. What does that mean? Well, the income ratio, how much people make in Manchester, basically. Um, the state of Vermont poverty level is $52,000 a year or lower. Okay. Okay? You tell me who makes $52,000 in Manchester, I'll guarantee you that it may be 10% of the town or 15% of the town only. Mm -hmm. And those jobs are not in Manchester. Those are people living in Manchester and working outside of Manchester. Mm -hmm. um, the hourly rates in Manchester are horrid. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's great for these hotels to come in. I think it's wonderful. However, they come in, they bring their own management structure, their own management team, and they pay minimum wage, just like most of your retail stores. Now, how can you afford a mortgage, and how can you afford even a rent? You have to look at jobs before you look at affordable housing. Habitat for Humanity. I was told the other day these Habitat homes here in Manchester go anywhere from 149 to 59, 159. Mm -hmm. On my salary, I could not afford that. In Bennington, they sell for 76,000. 
time. So can you answer that question for me? Why that difference? 46% of the students and students' families at MEMS are below poverty level. Hmm. Explain that to me. You know? Again, and you have the school budget. I'm not familiar with the school budget as, as much as I probably should be. Um, I think they're having some issues uh, with the state's policies. Um, I was reading something tonight to where the state has attempted to fix that. Um, they were looking at $400,000. So that's on top of what we're proposing in our budget. So that's on top of $519 increase. Mm -hmm. Think about the retired people in town. Think about the elderly people in town. And you want to keep kids, children out of Burn Burton here and stay here? There's no big de development opportunity. We have 67 acres that the town has owned for several years by the airport. Mm -hmm. The economic study that they just brought through that we're going, uh, there's a meeting tomorrow night at Long Trail School mm -hmm. right. about the community development. Mm -hmm. um, they, we need to bring business in that draws economic development. Mm -hmm. We don't have it. Since I've been on the select board, nobody that I know of has come to the select board and said, can we help you or try to help you develop that property for Toyota Motor Company? Or, I, you know, a Vermont chair company or something mm -hmm. that will come in and pay 16 to $25 an hour. Mm -hmm. We haven't had that. But yet, these studies that are out there that this is, we've had several studies that have gone nowhere. Anytime you see the word study or economic development, you see dollar signs. Hmm. Okay? If we want to develop that property, you know, look at uh, Malta, New York. Not a big community. Mm -hmm. Have you been over there? I have not. Um, they've got the nanotech. They have piggybacked off of Schenectady mm -hmm. and uh, was MIT in Troy. Mm -hmm. Is it MIT? In Troy, the, the, the uh, college that we'll was Google involved. That. <laughs> anyway, um, and brought in nanotech. Right. And Malta has built up these nice homes for these people. You have contractors put to work. You have plumbers put to work. Mm -hmm. You have electricians put to work. You, you know, build the community, you put them back in. You know, the economic study said that in two, since 2014, uh, building homes and that kind of thing has dwindled in the Shire area. Mm -hmm. I've seen it. Mm -hmm. Most of your high-end contractors that were here, one are no longer here or are retired mm -hmm. because they can't afford to live here, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so that, um, I really believe that you've got to bring in industry um, before you look at affordable housing. Mm -hmm. um, you've got to have the money to rent a place or buy a place. Mm -hmm. um, there is help. There's a place in Rutland called NeighborWorks of West Rutland. Mm -hmm. They're a federal, federally funded loan um, organization. Um, I have to tell you that that's where I got my loan for my house to buy my brother out. Mm -hmm. um, it's about $292 a month, mm -hmm. which I was very fortunate. Um, but I couldn't afford a full mortgage or uh, a brand new car, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. Um, and that's why I look at these things, and that's how I look at these things when I'm behind that table. Right. You know, all right, can you survive in Manchester? Most of the people that work in Manchester are not local people because they can't afford to live here on the salary they make here. Exactly, I know. And, you know, it's, 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 where do we start, where do we work on that? Is there a solution? I think there's parts to a solution. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people come here for education. 
We have great education. MEMS, mm -hmm. yes, Maple do. Street, Burn Burton. Mm -hmm. um, I graduated from Burn Burton in 1979. You're um, showing your age. Yeah. You know, everybody's doing the, the math now, you know. <laughs> I did move out of town. 79 you graduated? Yeah, yeah. I did just move a baby. Out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I did move out of town. I was with Marriott for 25 years. Mm -hmm. And mom got ill and I moved back. Um, but I gave up a very big job to come back. I mean, you know, a six figure job down to, you know, I'm working three jobs now. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, you have to look at that in perspective as well. Um, but, uh, you know, another thing we were talking about as well is in the budget, we added $75,000 for a drug, in, drug enforcement investigator. Yes. Um, the Vermont State Police has one drug task force. Mm -hmm. Consists of six or seven state troopers. They're out of Rutland. Basically, most of their work is Rutland and above. Mm -hmm. um, we really have a serious drug problem here in town. And it really hit home to me when a, a wonderful family who has been here all their lives, like I pretty much have, and their son died. Mm -hmm. And I was devastated. And I was told at Maple Fields that he died of a heroin overdose. How old was he? 20, I think 20. And in reading in the papers, you know, that drug is coming into Manchester. We may be saying, ah, no, it's not, or, you know, to There is a denial out there. there a, a serious denial, mm -hmm. even in the schools. Yes. High well, schools, they don't want to admit that elementary schools. Yeah. And I have to say that I've heard um, where the drugs are being passed right off in a parking lot to the elementary kids. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's sad. And we have to address this issue. Mm -hmm. um, I have made, I was very pushy, I have to say, in a sense, to get this position open. First of all, we haven't hired a police officer in 24 years. Mm -hmm. But we're growing. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the, we're yeah, bringing in, yeah. in employees, we're bringing in people, we're bringing in traffic, but we're not growing that infrastructure mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because we're concentrating on other things, mm -hmm. pet projects, okay? So we're addressing this. Um, Chief Hall and I have talked on several occasions. He's the expert. I'm not the expert. I'm just sharing things that I've heard from the taxpayers and the local people. And things you've experienced personally. Experienced personally. And I have suggested that um, if we, well, we will move forward, is to create a drug task force committee. Mm -hmm. um, also create a neighborhood watch. Mm -hmm. Create an education program for high school students, mm -hmm. uh, elementary students, Parents of heroin addicts, I think we need to move that far mm -hmm. because it's a lack of education. Mm. That's not the answer, though. No. Um, it's a step in the right direction. Are we going to solve this problem? Are we going to cure it? No. We're going to control it. Somehow, this town is going to control it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and further out, you know, who would be on that drug task force committee? Um, you know, you, you have to look at that. You, uh, should we have somebody from the Bennington Police Department where that is being funneled up through mm -hmm. or over from through Bennington? Should we have somebody from the Vermont State Police Department? Um, some local drug, uh, the collaborative. Mm -hmm. um, Chief Hall, of course, a select board member, possibly a local citizen, um, a family who has been through the crisis, through death. Mm -hmm. um, so we're on the right track. Let's work together. Um, let's be productive. 
but let's be conscious of what we have. Mm -hmm.